One of the simplest yet most useful differentiation rules is to do with the sum of functions. This tells you that if you have f of x and g of x, the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. That's correct. We'll see that this is the case because derivatives essentially share the properties of limits. And you should remember that for limits there is a very similar property, that the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. To show that this is the case, let's call this function that you obtain by summing j of x. This is important so we can use differentiation from first principles and we're going to try to calculate the derivative of j of x. Uh, the derivative of j of x is equal to the limit when h goes to zero of j of x plus h minus j of x over h. If we look at the definition of j of x, j of x is given by f of x plus j of x. It means that if we plug in x plus h into j of x, x plus h, we get f x plus h plus g x plus h. So this is what we're going to plug in here. We can write this as the limit. I'm going to try to be compact so it actually fits h goes to zero of f of x plus h plus g of x plus h, this component, minus f of x minus g of x divided by h. So typically in these demonstrations, this is the simplest one, it's very easy, there's not a lot of manipulation going on, but what you want to do is to re-express this into something that you can recognize. In this case, what we're going to do is to group the terms, put the f's together and the g's together. So you can write this as the limit when h goes to zero of f x plus h minus f of x plus g x plus h minus g of x. And this is all divided by h. The important thing here is to know the properties of limits. There's a sum property saying that the limit of the sum is the same as the sum of the limits. We can actually break the limit apart. And we can write it as limit when h goes to zero of f x plus h minus f of x divided by h plus the limit when h goes to zero of g x plus h minus g of x divided by h. And the final part of demonstrating that this is true is to identify this and identify this. And clearly, by using differentiation from first principles, we can see that this term is actually the derivative of function f, and this term is the derivative of function g. So we have demonstrated from first principles that the derivative of a sum of a function is the sum of the individual derivatives. The other differentiation rules are going to be similar, but not quite as simple. They will involve kind of adding and subtracting terms and manipulating them a little bit more. Uh, we can do it. 